click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, today we will talk about a centralized architecture and the client server architecture. We will discuss what is the difference between these two and what is the trend that we move from centralized to the client system server architecture. The architecture means the basic design of computing and in terms of the DBMS that means how we are processing the database inside a computer. So there are two broader categories for the architecture of accessing and DBMS. First one is in centralized one and the second one is in client server basis. So the main difference between a centralized and client server is one is happening with many of the computers and other is having a single computer system. So the single computer system is the centralized one which we will discuss at first. Centralized system completes with one computer system that is not connected to any network and that serves as its own client and own server from the database which is stored inside this computer system only. Now the client server system in the contrast uses the system of the centralized as the server and a part of it other computer system connect to it. We will come to this at a later point but first let us discuss about the centralized system. The centralized system is all having a single computer or a single processor. Each processor can serve as its core and only one processor as it's have in a single processing system. Now there are much more that is available in this client server, there are lesser availability on the centralized server or the centralized system. Then what is the need of a centralized system? See for every server that it needs to purposefully store the database and to serve all the functions that can be served by a single user, it can be served by a centralized system. Centralized system can serve as a single user as well as a multi-user processor. Now the single user processor uses a single person that can access that particular computer system. Whereas by the multi-user process or concept, the multiple persons or user can conceptualize that computer and use that computer for a basis. Now when we are having the single user, then we can say that there is less chance of having the concurrency control, less chance of having the locking protocol because there is only single user and there will be much more complicated than in the multiple user where the single user is having only one or two processes attached for each task. Now even in the centralized computer system, the multiple users or multi-user system bodies can have a larger number of complexities where a primitive or a non-concurrency control and also the security is required. Now how does a centralized system works? The processor becomes the core or the backbone of the computer and to which it, it is attached with many other device controllers. Now each of the device controllers is in the charge of specific type of devices. Say for the IO device controller takes control of the IO devices like this keyboard, mouse, the USB device controller takes care of the flash drives or the USB drives. And according to this, all the controllers are connected to a common bus on which it can communicate with the server or the centralized computer system. Now the processor can give command or the CPU that can take cycles on each of this device controller which just place registers or the device register on it. Now the device register in turns indicate the devices that the next use of yours will be connected to the CPU. So in this way the basic functionality of the centralized system happens. But what happens within database that is connected to a centralized system? Now the architecture on which the database is followed in a centralized architecture or in system is followed by the functionality that the database is now stored uniquely and unitly within this centralized system. So there is no need to have the functionalities of the distributed system that we can have in the database management.
but the disadvantages have there are much more functionalities that we can achieve when in a distributed database but as it is in a single processing system then only the user even in the multiple user system can access that particular database that belong to the system now the database access becomes much more simpler easier but also less efficient than others now the crash or recovery from this crash is primitive or none in this general purpose computer now most of our general purpose computer today are composed with a coarser level of granularity that is the coarser granularity locking what do you mean by this coarser granularity because even if we check that there is multiple processors so the number of processors are very less in the general purpose computer say you and i am using a laptop or an pc we do not need to have one more processor or two more processor to have our daily work done so we use the purpose of a general purpose computer which can be solved by a single or at least two or three processor so now the level of concurrency the level of parallelisms all are very low compared to have when the finer level of granularity the finer granularity parallelism is important while there are multiple number of processors so some general purpose computer that is solved for the university or say an enterprise can have multiple processors attached to it which requires a final level of granularity that includes also the recovery system crash the system crash from this particular system or logical error and all this we need to take care in this type of system now parallelism is emerging as a critical portion of this one when we are considering a centralized system see for one computer system we can have more than one or two processor attached to it so if the parallel works or instructions are not being performed inside this computer then it is becoming extremely difficult for us to communicate between the database servers say if it is in a centralized system then it must acquire a large database for each of this computer or the processor to access with now if they occur in a sequential way that means they are working one processor and the result will be given to another one or one processor needs to wait for another processor to complete its work now if we divide the processor in such a way that while one is processing with its cpu cycles other processor can go on with its io cycles so that it can reach and fetch the data in a better way from the database that is stored inside the centralized system so the parallelism that which main concern for a general purpose computer either for the coarser level of granularity or for the final level of granularity so now we can have all the problems that is associated with a centralized system and that we can solve with some extent with a client server architecture but also we need to know that the centralized system has a very simple and all the problems that can be associated with a distributed database or the issues that we can face like the concurrency control the parallelism problem can be a much lesser extent in this centralized system that is why if it is for a shorter enterprise or for a general purpose use like for the daily use by every user or the normal user who is lesser wants to store a shorter database or say no database to it while we are having the general purpose use like the daily use of when the shorter database is needed or no database is needed at all then we will stick to the centralized computer system architecture now we will go to the next section that is in client server system architecture in the client server system architecture the centralized computer became the server now and on which every other client or other generalized computer system are attached to it for the client now the database being secured and stored in the server architecture and the client either being a data server or a transaction server can attach to the client and then serve the client its query so either the client can transaction query make to the server or they want to fetch the data directly and read and modify them based on the type of server that what it is serving to
if it is in a data server then it can directly update the data or if it is in a transaction server then various processes are attached to it to have access to the data there is a system of message parsing mutual exclusion and semaphore on which we can control each of the process on this client which are connecting to the server now the client server system architecture is different from the centralized one in one big difference that now the task is being divided to many clients and not it is dependent only one client so if there is any situation on the network that falls from this one client to the one server also we can have other connect that can be connected through the network to the server that means say there are five clients connected to a network on which the server is connected to so either it can be a single network or either can be the client is having a network another client is having another type of network so this is in front of where we can provide the lan or a more secure connection because when in a client server system architecture we can have that at most at time of this the network connection that we want to be most secure lan is the most secure one because it configures of a smaller geographical boundary so now we can have within an enterprise say for the first floor to the third floor computers that are connected to each other being one as the server other as the client or within an area of 1 km or say within a city now this type of issues that is the difference between in client system and a centralized system architecture now the client server system architecture has two broad categories depending on its functionality first one is in back end that is considered most with an sql engine that is supported by the query optimization all the query processing and then qbe or this other one now when we are having the front end it can have all the sql designing the database designing the enterprise modeling the data mining tools the report generation tools the sql user interface tools that we commonly told as sql analysis tool so all the user oriented task that the client will be done is considered to be the front end and the back end that means all the optimization of query processing of query is done by the sql engine as the back end now the back end is generally considered to be the server and the front ends as the client of this particular architecture now this client and server is connected to the network and obviously the sql commands that is connected to the database within an jdbc or odbc connectivity now the jdbc connectivity allows that all the sql engine or the optimizations on the database that can be performed within an sql user interface by either the java or other high level programming languages now let us talk about the transactional remote procedure calls when we are talking about in client server system architecture then it is absolutely mandatory to have the remote procedure calls or rpcs now there is a callback facility from this rpcs from each of the client to the server that means first the clients needs to produce an rpc on remote procedure call on which it will place all the variables or the arguments like which data it need to fetch what operation it need to update or what are the data that we want to get from the server side so now this rpc will contain the information of the operation from the client and also to which server and to connect to which port to the server so along with this information rpc receives at the server side now the server can either reply to the rpc by this transactional rpc or it can just directly reject the rpc because some information is missing from it now rpcs are becoming extremely important because it provides a soothless way to connect with an client and server while a function has been called in behalf of the computer or client to the server now the transactional rpcs are more like where the rpcs content is more the transactions that begins with a transaction start and ends with a transaction end so all the transaction operation must be placed within start and end and that must be placed within rpc from the client side to the server side that it is moving
Now, as we are in our database system, we have followed a three-tier and a two-tier architecture where we can imply the architecture often front-end and back-end. While we are using the spreadsheets, the web browser, all that go for a particular application is becoming the front-end. And in the back-end, like as the QBE or the SQL engine, which is serve as the back-end of the computer system. Now we can say where we are following in two-tier architecture, the application server is not present in the server-side architecture. So the server-side itself considered to the client request and then serve the request from itself. Now in a three-tier architecture, the web browser becomes the front-end, the application server becomes the middle-end, and the server becomes the third-end. So now in this way, the API or the application programmer interface designers give an application program or construct an application program in such a way that it can connect to the server and get the request served by that particular server. Now, if it is in a transaction server, now the APIs should go the query fetching department and look for it as the most concern. If it is in a data server, then it looks for the data cache and also the log cache to go for all the finer granularity and the coarser granularity problem. So in this way, we can solve either of this application server or the server client on this three-tier or two-tier architecture to solve the client-server architecture problem. Now, if we combine both the ideas of a client server and a centralized one, we can see that the client server is definitely a better one because it differentiates the workload among different clients. And also, we can have many clients that connect to a single database. So it is in our online situation or in current real-time situation where we can have many clients that is associated with each single server. So now the architecture that we can adapt to is definitely the client server architecture rather than a single centralized system. But one issue that we need to solve within client server system architecture is that now we need to take care of the concurrency control and the final level of locking granularity. Because now there will be many process that belongs to many of these clients that can connect to the server. So the concurrency between the processes like the mutual exclusion or the semaphore, these concepts arise in this client server architecture. And also if we talk about other than this process concurrency, the final level of locking granularity. So if the client wants a particular item that can be a data or a tuple or an object from that relation, then we need to acquire an exclusive mode lock on that particular item. Other than that, if just want to read that item, it can go for a shared mode lock. Now also the client server system architecture supports for this adaptive lock of granularity. That means it can change and de-escalate from an exclusive to shared mode lock if there is no need to access and pre-processed or pre-fetched pages. So that is all for the comparison between a centralized and client server system architecture. Thank you for watching this video. Stay tuned with Ikira and subscribe to Ikira.